Heaven's Gain Ministries presents our miscarriage kit. What is its purpose and how to use it? For those parents who have found out that their baby no longer has a heartbeat, we want you to know that we are very sorry about the loss of your baby. If you have any questions after viewing this video, please contact one of our Heaven's Gain Ministries Advocates for Parents of Perinatal Loss, Apples, and they will answer your questions and provide support to the best of their ability. You can find out more information on our website at heavensgain.org. This video and PowerPoint presentation are not meant as medical advice. Our certified advocates for parents of perinatal loss, apples, provide education, options, and guidance, but do not provide medical advice. Please ask your physician for medical advice when using the miscarriage kit. All the contents of the miscarriage kit come in a durable pink resealable bag, except for the specimen collector hat. That does not fit in the bag, but it is included in the miscarriage kit. Here are all the items of the miscarriage kit when taken out of the bag. We will discuss the use of each item in the following slides. The purpose of the miscarriage kit is to measure blood loss. Patients who use the miscarriage kit can give objective information about the amount of blood loss during the miscarriage to medical professionals. Please ask your doctor about how much blood loss is concerning and what to do. The most common reason women of childbearing years go to the emergency department is due to blood loss with miscarriage. Using the miscarriage kit empowers women to have improved control of their health and well being during a miscarriage. We will go over the additional purpose of the miscarriage kit in future slides. A graduated colander is included in the miscarriage kit to measure blood loss. Since different women use a variety of pads and consider them full at a variety of times, using them for a blood measurement tool is not a subjective way to measure blood loss. And both a small and a large amount of blood can make the toilet water look red. So this is another subjective way of measuring blood loss. Measuring actual blood loss with a specimen collector hat is a more objective way to measure blood loss when on the toilet. Use the blood loss measurement chart to document the amount of blood measured each time you empty the specimen collection hat. Ask your doctor when you should be concerned about too much blood loss. Also ask your doctor when to call him or go to the emergency room. In addition to the purpose of measuring blood loss, the other purposes of the miscarriage kit are to find the baby, to catch the placenta for possible testing, and to have a vessel in which to place the baby's remains. A vessel is a place to care and protect for the baby. You will use the colander to find the baby and to catch the placenta for possible testing. Start using the colander when you start cramping and bleeding. Open the pink resealable bag and take out the collapsible colander. The collapsible colander will be in a separate resealable bag. Take the colander out of the bag Push down on the center of the colander to uncollapse the colander. Then place the colander into the specimen hat. It should sit flush onto the hat. When you start cramping and bleeding, it's time to use the specimen hat and colander. Place the specimen hat and colander in the toilet with the seat up. Then put the toilet seat down and you are ready to use Blood will pass through the colander into the specimen collector to be measured. The colander will collect the baby and tissue that are too large to pass through the holes. When the colander has collected items that do not drain, take the colander and squeeze bottle to the sink. Fill the squirt bottle with water. Use the squirt bottle to rinse the contents of the colander. 
then discern what you will find. In the colander, you may find blood clots, especially at first. Remember to place any blood clots in the specimen hat to include with a blood loss measurements. Wash, dry, and place the colander back in the resealable bag to be ready to use the next time you are in the bathroom. This process may take several times. In the colander, you may also find, besides blood clots, the amniotic sac, the baby, which you can possibly find at seven weeks of pregnancy, the placenta. Knowing your weeks is important. Know how many weeks the baby was when he or she died. Many babies do not deliver until three to four weeks after they have died. It's important to know how many weeks the baby was when he or she died in order to anticipate the possible size and development of the baby. It is important to know the number of weeks since your last menstrual period or weeks pregnant. The placenta may continue to grow after the baby has died. The placenta may be closer to the size of the number of weeks the mother had been pregnant as compared to the size it would have been when the baby died. Remember, this is important to anticipate the size of the placenta being delivered into the colander. A baby development card is included in the miscarriage kit. It shows the development of the baby week by week, along with a written description of his or her development. This card is available in English and in Spanish. On the back side of the card are written directions on how to use the miscarriage kit and how to find the baby and how to use the saline bath technique. This card is available in Spanish on the front and back. The next four slides show models of babies in the first trimester. This is a model of a baby at 12 weeks of pregnancy, or LMP, last menstrual period. You can see that if you would stretch this baby's legs out, he is almost three inches long. This is a model of a baby at 11 weeks of pregnancy, or nine weeks from conception. If her legs were stretched out, she would be about two and a half inches long. Here's a model of a baby at 10 weeks of pregnancy, about one and a half inches long. And this is a model of a nine weeks, a baby at nine weeks of pregnancy, less than an inch long. We hope these pictures will be helpful for you when you are looking for your baby in the colander. Each time you find something in the colander, go to the sink and use the squirt bottle to rinse the contents of the colander discern what you will find. Eventually, one of the times when you go to the sink and rinse out the contents of the colander, we hope you will find your baby. Sometimes the baby is delivered in the sack. Some sacks are translucent and flexible, while other sacks are blood-filled and firm. Here's a picture of a baby in the sack. You can see the umbilical cord and the placenta attached. After finding your baby in the colander, carefully place the baby into the vessel included in the miscarriage kit. Then add saline water to the vessel to recreate the womb environment. You should be able to see your baby floating in water as if in the womb. This is also a great way to take pictures of your baby. The saline water may slow the deterioration of the baby a bit, but when not viewing the baby, place the baby in the vessel into refrigeration to further slow the deterioration until cremation or burial. Not included in the miscarriage kit are caskets that are available from Heaven's Gain Ministries. On the left, there are several choices of wood caskets that can be placed in a vault like the ones on the lower right. There's a combination of casket vault on the upper right. Also not included in the miscarriage kit are a variety of beautiful urns that Heaven's Gain Ministries has available. Finding the placenta. The placenta starts to form seven to 10 days after conception, but it is not obvious until much later. The placenta may be found as early as eight weeks of pregnancy and may continue to grow after the baby has died, even up to the time of delivery. The placenta becomes larger as the pregnancy continues, 
so the placenta may be much larger than it was when the baby died. In order to discern blood clots from the placenta, we have these pictures. The blood clot on the left is thinner and stretches out. The placenta in the center is thicker and rounder. Place the placenta in the bag provided in the miscarriage kit, then seal the bag. If you choose to have chromosome or other testing on the placenta, please keep the placenta refrigerated until you can bring it to the doctor or hospital. Also included in the miscarriage kit are three pairs of gloves for the person who might be assisting you. We recommend that you have someone available with you as you are going through the miscarriage in case you need medical help that they can call the hospital or 911. This is the miscarriage kit laid out. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see pamphlets and a brochure. The pamphlets help in grieving. There are four pamphlets, one for fathers, one for mothers, one for grandparents, and another to help friends and family know what they can do to help. There's also a brochure to inform you of additional products and free services that Heaven's Gain Ministries offers. The National Perinatal Association has a position paper named Interdisciplinary Guidelines for Care of Women Presenting to the Emergency Department with Pregnancy Loss. In point 14, it reads, patients and families should be given specific information for dignified disposition of any product of conception. So disposition means burial or cremation and product of conception is the baby. Point 15 states, the team should explain how to use a hat or strainer when using the toilet in case tissue, baby, or placenta is passed. Such collection items should be offered to the mother in a convenient and dignified manner. So you can see that the recommendation of some type of miscarriage kit is recommended by the National Perinatal Association by these guidelines. Heaven's Gain Ministries offered information at this conference where the position paper was discussed. We also offer free support services for individuals, couples, and group support. Our Pregnancy Loss Group Support Group is on the second Thursday of each month via Zoom. And when you're pregnant with that rainbow pregnancy, that is the pregnancy after the storm of a loss comes a rainbow, that support group is on the fourth Thursday of each month. Both of these are Zoom support groups and you will need an ID and password to join. Call 513-619-0100 for more information and to get the ID and password. You can also find out some additional information about our support groups on our website at heavensgain.org. Again, if you have any questions after viewing this video, please contact one of our Heaven's Gain Ministries Advocates for Parents of Perinatal Loss, Apples, and they will help answer your questions and provide support to the best of their ability. This video and PowerPoint presentation are not meant as medical advice. Our certified advocates for parents of perinatal loss, Apples, provide education options, and guidance, but do not provide medical advice. Please ask your physician for medical advice when using the miscarriage kit. We hope this presentation was helpful. Please comment below telling us how and why you found this video to be helpful. We would appreciate it if you can like, share, and subscribe to this video in our channel so we can help even more parents experiencing miscarriage and stillbirth. You can also see and hear more videos on miscarriage, stillbirth, and early infant loss, grief, and healing on our YouTube channel or our podcast, Let's Talk Miscarriage and Stillbirth. Find out more information on our website, heavensgain.org. And thank you for listening to this presentation.